Hello world, welcome back to another Try Hack Me challenge room. In this video, we'll be walking through the room called Profiles. Let's get into it. The incident response team has alerted you that there was some suspicious activity on one of the Linux database servers. A memory dump of the server was taken and provided to you for analysis. You advise the team that you are missing crucial information from the server, but it has already been taken offline. They just made your job a little harder, but not impossible. Click on the Download Task Files button at the top of this task. You will be provided with an evidence.zip file. Extract the zip file's contents and begin your analysis in order to answer the questions. Note, the challenge is best done using your own environment. I recommend using Volatility 2.6.1 to handle this task and strongly advise using this article by Sean Whalen to aid you with the volatility installation. Okay, so I already have volatility downloaded, as you'll see here. I, all I did there was pull up a help menu to demonstrate that it is running. And we also have the files downloaded and unzipped, and you get this linux.mem file. So we're going to be using volatility, a memory dump analysis tool, on that Linux memory. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole setup process for volatility. You can look at the link that they provide here to get all that. And once you complete that, you'll actually need to generate a profile for Linux in order to be able to use volatility properly with the memory dump that they provided in this challenge. Now, that being said, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to create that Linux profile so that you can do this challenge. And then we'll proceed into actually answering the challenge questions. So the first things first is we need to figure out what kind of headers we're going to be dealing with as far as this memory dump is concerned. And those will be important when we're actually trying to generate the profile. There's a couple ways to do this. The first way is the way I'm going to use, which is I'm going to run strings on linux.mem, and then I'm going to grep for Linux version. And you'll actually get to a little stopping point, and you can go ahead and control C once you see something like this. These are the headers we're going to be using, and this is the actual flavor and version of Linux that the memory dump was taken from. And you'll also need to keep track of that as well. The other way to do this is if you have Volatility 3 downloaded. I only have Volatility 2 on this Kali machine, but if you have Volatility 3, you can run vol3 tacf linux.mem, and then you can run banner, and that'll also print out the Linux headers that you'll need to generate your profile. But that being said, we're going to actually go to the op directory. What we're going to do in here is we're going to start off by cloning volatility from another GitHub repo. And you'll see why we have to do that here in a second. And I actually need to run that with sudo. Okay, so now you'll have a volatility folder. We're going to navigate into that volatility folder. And then we're going to navigate into the tools directory. And then we're going to navigate into the Linux directory. And you should see these make files in here. These are what we're going to use to actually generate the profile we have to use in order to complete this challenge. Now, there are a couple ways of actually generating the profile, but we're going to use the easiest method, which is using Docker. You'll actually need Docker for this, so you'll want to run sudo apt install docker.io like that. I already have it, so we don't need to do that. And we're going to run sudo docker run tac it, and that's going to create an interactive terminal. Tac tac rm, that's going to remove the container after we disconnect from it. And then we're going to specify our current working directory and mirror that directory into a volatility folder. And then we're going to specify the Linux version and flavor that you can find on Docker Hub. If you just navigate to Docker Hub, you'll be able to look up this version of Linux. And you'll want to use the image name and then the tag associated with it, which will be the Linux version. And it'll be Ubuntu colon 20.04, as we saw earlier. And then you're going to want to specify the entry point that you're going to be wanting to interact with, which would be bash, because we want to interact with a shell in order to do the next steps. So we'll run that, and as you can see, we've entered our Ubuntu machine that we generated. Now we're going to run apt update, and I'm going to copy and paste this over from my notes so I don't have to type it all out. We're going to run apt update and apt install, and we're going to need all these different packages here. The most important packages that you would typically have to modify, depending on what your Linux headers are, are these two right here. You can see the string that we saw earlier in that strings command that we ran. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to add the package's Linux image and then tack the header that we saw and then Linux headers and tack the header that we saw. And you can just do that with copy paste. And that'll be consistent no matter what version or flavor of Linux you're running. You'll just copy and paste that string after the Linux image and Linux headers packages here. Then we have build essential, dwarf dump, make, GCC, and zip. So we're going to press enter. And this will take a minute, so I'll just skip to the part of the video where this is finished. Now that all those package installs are done, we're going to navigate into our new volatility directory that you'll see right here. And then you're going to notice that we have a mirror of our host machine here. We have our make file that we saw earlier. And here's the important part of this make file that I'm going to show you now. If we cat it out, you're going to notice that there's a dynamically updated kernel version right here. We need to actually change that to be a static version, and that static version is going to mimic the headers that we saw before. Now there's a simple sed command that we can use to change this, and I'm going to copy and paste it here. And this is essentially taking this line right here and replacing it with our headers that we want. And then saving it, of course, to the make file. We're going to run that. Now if we cut out our make file, we can see the changed kernel version here. And then we can go ahead and run make. And you're going to notice this new module.dwar file. So now we're going to create a zip of all the files that we're going to need in order to create our profile. And the zip file is essentially going to be our profile file that we save to our volatility plugins directory. So we'll run zip and then we'll call Ubuntu 20.04 because that's the Linux flavor and version that we're dealing with and then module.dwarf and then the other thing we need is the actual system map for our headers which I probably should have done that first all you need to do is look in the boot directory and you're gonna find your system map right here so let's go ahead and retype out our zip command with module.dwarf and then our system map and then our Ubuntu 20.04.zip file has been created. And let me go ahead and move that into an actual zip directory. I forgot the extension there. Okay, now with that out of the way, we'll exit out of our Docker container. And if we do ls in our directory here, we can see our Ubuntu 20.04 zip file. And now we want to copy that to our plugins overlays Linux directory. Now you're going to have to find where your volatility is installed here. So what we can do is we can do a find slash tag name volatility. And I needed to run that as sudo. And it looks like our volatility directory actually lies within our Python 2.7 site packages folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and then we're going to ls it. And we want plugins, then we want overlays, and then we want Linux, like so. And that's where we're going to save our Ubuntu 20.04.zip. As you can see, I have it in there from when I solved this last time. So we don't really need to copy it over, but I'll do it anyways, just to show you how to run the copy command here. So we'll do sudo copy our Ubuntu 20.zip there. And then it'll be copied to our overlays here. And now it should still be in there, so let's go ahead and double check. Now let's go back to our challenge directory. Now with all that having been done, we should have our profile loaded in volatility. And the way we can check that is we can do vol tac tac info grep for profile. And if we scroll up, we can find our Linux Ubuntu 20.04 profile at the top here. And that's what we're going to be specifying as our profile argument while we're running volatility on our Linux memory dump. So we'll copy that and let's go ahead and clear the board here. And now let's actually start solving the challenge. So our first question asks, what is the exposed root password? 
So what we're going to do first is run vol tech f, and we're going to specify our memory dump. Then we're going to specify our profile that we copied earlier. And then we're going to start off with the Linux underscore bash module. And what that's going to do is give us a bash command history. Scrolling up in our results here, we can actually find a command that switches to root. And then the password directly follows the root user in the command. So we'll copy that and paste it in as our first answer. Our next question asks, what time was the users.db file approximately accessed? And they give us the format for it. If we just direct our gaze to the second line in our bash command history, we'll actually find the date and time that we need to answer the next question. So we'll copy that and paste it in here. Our third question asks, what is the MD5 hash of the malicious file found? So for this one, if you look a bit further down in our bash command history, you'll actually find this download command right here, wget, and it's compiling a shell.c that is being downloaded from this IP address to an output file called pke-exec. So we need a way to parse out that pke-exec file so that we can grab the md5 hash from it. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the linux find file command like so, and then we're going to do tech capital L to start off with because we want all the files and their paths that we can possibly get because that's going to give us the inode we need in order to parse out the file. Now that that's done, we can do ls and we can see our files.txt that we generated from redirecting the output of the Linux find file module. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And we're just going to do a simple control F to find the PK exec file that we need to grab the MD5 hash from. And the file is right here. This value right here is the inode, and that's the value we need in order to parse out our PK exec file. So we'll copy that. And we're going to run that same find file module that we ran before, but this time we're going to specify the inode and then a name for our output file. And we'll just call it what they called it inside the memory dump. And I actually used the wrong flag there. It's actually tack lowercase i. Okay, now we have our pk exec file so we can run md5 sum on it. And this will be the md5 hash that we need to answer this question. All right, our fourth question asks, what is the IP address and port of the malicious actor? So for this one, we're going to use the Linux netstat module. And we're going to scroll up until we start seeing our malicious IP address. And you're going to notice that there's some very obvious port 1337s here, which is clearly the port we want. And the IP address is obviously what we saw earlier in that bash file. So this was mainly to find the port. So we're going to type that in as our answer. And submit that. All right, our fifth question asks, what is the full path of the cron job file and its inode number? Okay, so we're going to go back to our files.txt file that we had open before, and we're just going to do a control F for cron, and you're going to want to look for something that kind of follows the format given in the answer format here, and the one we're going to be focusing on is this one right here, and it wants the full path, which would be var spool cron cron tabs root, And it wants our inode number, which is this right here. The inode and the inode number are two different things. The inode number is more of an index, and the inode is more of a physical address. And our sixth and final question asks, what command is found inside the cron job file? So just like what we did with the PK exec file, we're pretty much going to follow the same methodology. We're going to go grab our inode here. We're going to use our find file module. We're going to specify the inode. And then we're going to specify the output file name, and we'll just call it cron. 
Now that our module's finished, let's check to see if our file was successfully generated and it appears that it was. And we're just going to cat out that file. And this is the command that they are looking for as the answer to this question. And with that, we have completed the room. And with that, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.